Hi, it's Colleen again. This is uh, part three, and it's a background on what you need to know as a parent for how your child learns. And what I found to be, um, I guess, most surprising is, is that our teachers don't sit down with us and give us all of this background information. They may not know it. You know, they may not have um, the ability to go out and, meaning like the resources, to actually go out and get this deep into research and understand how the brain learns and then different opportunities to help your child. They may not just be equipped to do that. That's been my theory all along. So they do a lot of the compensatory approaches, the workarounds. So a scenario to help you understand how the brain learns and then how to start empowering you as a parent so you know what your choices are. If uh, your child goes to school and let's just say they're doing um, a math class and they are able to do everything okay in school and then they come home to do their homework and then you have meltdowns and you can't understand why your child is having a meltdown like what is it that they don't understand because for some reason you're under the impression everything's fine at school and the teacher's telling you that everything's fine at school but yet you want your child to do their homework on their own and they can't you forever end up sitting down with your child and either breaking the task into smaller pieces, covering part of the paper, um, reading the instructions over and over again, maybe in different ways, or you have to take out um, manipulatives, if you will, and explain the concept. So the reason for that, nine times out of ten, is that in school they use what's called a multisensory approach, and um, they're able to reach every child who may have weak cognitive skills, but you know, in a sense, we're only still doing compensatory because they're not fixing the weak skills. So how this works is all of us have our senses, meaning we have the eyes and we have, um, we'll, we'll learn through mostly taking in through our eyes and taking in through what we hear and then through touch. And when it's with school, they do programs and curriculums where they will show the student They'll model the behavior for a math problem, like on a whiteboard. They'll sit there and model the whole thing through. They'll also uh, take out the manipulatives so the child can actually use their hands to do it. And then they'll also discuss with the class in an interactive session, like maybe question and answer, and they'll talk their way through the whole thing with the child. So all senses are being touched upon. And our senses, um, hearing and uh, visual, for our auditory processing, our visual processing, we also have memory buckets that go along with that. So aside from our short-term memory buckets where we hold the data to process, we can hold the data specifically within our visual memory bucket. So anything we take in from our eyes that's being processed, we have our own little memory cup for that. And then also with our ears, what we hear we, and process what we hear, we have our own memory cup for that as well. And the important distinction is when we talk visual and auditory processing, it's the processing of what's being taken in. It's not the mechanics of can my child see, you know, does my child need glasses or not, that's something different. And the same thing with hearing, it's not does my child have any hearing loss or any issues around hearing. The mechanics of the ear, the mechanics of the eye are fine, um, and it's the processing of what's coming in through those senses, and then what does your child's brain do with it? That's, that's the issue, and that's where your child could have a weakness. So in school, if your child's um, visual cup, memory cup, is very small, per se, because it's weak, it's okay, because let's just say your child's hearing the auditory cup is very large. So when the teacher hits upon all these different multi-sensory approaches, if your child can't do it this way with the visual memory cup or processing what's coming in, then your child can quickly go over to the auditory memory cup. So the information that needs to be remembered, it's either going to be remembered visually or through everything they hear. So what happens when you come home now, um, your child comes home from school, they can have a meltdown, they have a math worksheet, they tell you, I don't know what to do. And you just say, well, you just went through school, you just did this whole thing in school, how can you not know what to do? And then you end up sitting down with your child, either you're covering part of the worksheet, 
or you're taking out manipulatives to say here's 10, here's 5, put them together, and then your child's fine, or you just literally have to speak everything to your child one-on-one. -on -one. And that's usually what you can see. You may see a, um, a sort of a simulation of what happens in school when you go to tutoring, and you may have to have a tutor with your child for, for years, forever, because you're not going behind the scenes to strengthen the visual memory cup or the way that your eye, their child's eyes and brains, uh, your child's brain is processing visually and the way that your child's brain is processing auditorially. So therefore you always are stuck going to like learning center or you're stuck going to a tutor or to the teacher or you as mom are always there doing homework with your child. So that's like a quick snippet on how to get the, the background information on how our brain learns. You can get much more information from either downloading my report on my website or um, if you sign up for my e-zine, you'll get weekly information. You'll get alerts on the different teleseminars that I do and webinars that will be coming up. Um, so just keep watching some of these videos and you'll get some more information. But don't wait too long to help your child because it is, it is difficult and frustrating where the parents think the child's being lazy or difficult, if you have a behavior issue with your child, it's, it's a red flag that you know something's off and it's not that the child's necessarily being difficult and testing boundaries. There could be an underlying problem. Thanks for watching.